10. Hmm. And Luke 2, 10. We have the shepherds out abiding in the field. And it says, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. Glory. Now we see in this that it says, Behold, I'll bring you good tidings. And what the angels was actually saying is, I'm bringing you some good news. Mm -hmm. I'm Glory. going to give you some positive Glory. reinforcement. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you something that yes. you can hold on to. Yes. And as we know, it was the good news that Jesus was born and the expected Messiah was being born. Mm. But it was the good news that they were bringing. And it said good tidings. But it says with this good news was great joy. Great joy. And see, this is the thing that we had to understand Great joy is cheerfulness. Mm -hmm. It's a calm delight or just a peace. And, and it's a gladness. So we see here that what he was bringing was good news that the Messiah has come. The good news, the King of Kings has come. The good news, the Prince of Peace has come. The good news, their Savior is come. Yes. And we have to understand, Glory. if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that we can confess our sins and he will forgive us and we make him Christ Lord of our life. Yes. That was the ultimate good news. We celebrate the birth of Jesus, but actually we're celebrating his whole life. His whole life. But that... We're the redemption that he came for us. That if we just believe, just believe and ask for forgiveness mm -hmm. and then make him the Lord, Lord of our life. It's that good news that we, if we believe, that we will have eternal life, life after death, that we will be able to live in the presence of him. Amen. So we see the good news is same then as it is now it has mm -hmm. not changed that God sent his son his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life so we understand this that if we confess our sins he's faithful and just to forgive us of yeah. all unrighteousness Boy. this is the good news that he had mm -hmm. for us but it said that it was in great joy it was just not just well, I'm just joyful and just doing this and that and other and just kind of happy, happy, happy. It is like, it was cheerfulness. It was cheerfulness. It was a calm delight that was over us. That was a peace that was over us. There was a gladness, a gladness that we received. Well, when we see this, I see a lot of people in this time of the Christmas season they forget what it's all about. They forget that it is about Jesus. They forget the joy of their nah, salvation. Nah. They forget mm. different things. They get so wrapped up in things in their life that they don't see reason why we celebrate. This is a time that we should celebrate the birth of Christ, but we should celebrate his death and resurrection every day in our life that we should have a constant joy in us. I see too many people that go around and they're not joyful because they are looking at other things and doing other things. And they don't, they lose the whole reason for this season. And this time as Christians, we look back and we need to understand this is also a time that joy should just be over and over, yes. that we learn to rejoice. Yes. And that Thank we should be refreshed. This is a season of refreshing to us. Yes. It's a re time of rededication. Thank you, it's a time of renewing yes. in our lives. This is a time that we realize what the whole purpose, why Jesus came as a, as a child in the first place. Amen. To live a life that is 
without sin, to be the example as a mortal being, which was also a godly being, that yes. God in man to show us the example of how we should live. Yes. So we understand that the joy. I see people going around with no joy. You see so many long faces. My, my. The other day, the other day I was in Texarkana, and there were some men, and I was so rejoicing over them. It's a bunch of men, older men, who were sitting over there. And they were laughing and carrying on and, yeah. and just 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 having a good time. There's about six of them just sitting around eating and just laughing and carrying on. I didn't know what their conversation was. I heard one word, but I won't say the one word they said. <laughs> but anyway, and I told them the one word and they got tickled. But they but I got up and I walked over to them. And you know, I says, you know, I am so thankful. I hear so many people griping and complaining, and but I'm seeing y'all that y'all are enjoying life, Amen. that you are doing laughter. Yes. You, you know, this just touched my heart, and it ended yeah. up it was it was a group of men and a pastor and their pastor, and then they were just enjoying. The, they said they called themselves their overhill game, and uh, <laughs> we just uh, so I mean that refreshed me. Yeah. It refreshed me. I was able to talk to them, and I was able to give some of my books out to them. Yeah. So you know, it was just like spreading the thing. You know, this was this was an ash down at the Burger King, and so we see that you know, we look for that we see too many that gripe and complain, and too many people that just you know they're in their own little world, and they just they, they it's all about me, nah. but you know. Jesus came that we have the great news of yes. the joy that he came that yes. we can be delivered. Amen. I have several scriptures that I want to read. Uh, Psalms 21.1 says, The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, in thy salvation, how greatly we rejoice. Now how many times that we realize that God, that the joy of our salvation is our strength. Ooh, How many times do we even Lord. realize that? That is the good news that mm. when we're going through trials yes. and tribulations and things just don't seem right, that we can say that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. That we get our strength again. We see the strength that he has given us. He came to give us that joy. Lord. And he gave it, came to give it mm. to us. And, and John 15, 11 says, These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. Now, think about this. Glory. And you know, a lot of times we get down. We get down and out. But Jesus came, the good news, that Jesus came, that he even came for those shepherds, is that you will have joy. Praise that God. you will have joy. Yes. But not only the joy in yourself, but his joy will remain in us. It was his joy. Yes. The joy that he came with to, to, for the sacrifice that we can be delivered, that Praise we can God. become the family of God. Mm -hmm. He had joy even though he knew the punishment that he was My going to God. have to endure. But he had joy. Mm -hmm. He counted it all joy nah. to do it for you and me. No matter where mm -hmm. you at, he prayed that his joy will remain in us. Boy. The joy that he had yes. that is doing what yes. God has called him to do, that you will have that joy. Yes. Psalms 5.11 says, But let those who put their trust in thee rejoice. Boy. Let them shout for joy, because thou mm -hmm. defendest them, and let them yes. also have the love, thy yes. name be joyful in thee. Yes. So we see again here that when we learn to trust God in all mm -hmm. circumstances, joy. when we learn to trust him, yes. he will give us joy. But we have to trust him, we have to trust him with the joy that he has given us. 
We trust him. And then when we're going through things and everything, it says that we need to learn to shout for joy because he, mm. we trust him and he will deliver us. Yes. He yes. will deliver us. Yes. All to sit to God's side. He'll deliver us. Yes, Let Lord. them that love thy name be joyful. Yes, amen. Just think that that love that he's put in you will give us the ability to love him. Amen. To be able to love other people. We Lord. also have to think that we should be joyful that even when we're going through something, the joy, we can rejoice over and over because he defends us. Yes. He stands in the gap for, through, for us. Yes. He is standing in that gap for us. Amen. He is the mediator. Mm. He is the mediator. Mm. Oh, Psalm 16, 11. Thou will show me the path of life. In that presence is fullness of joy. And at their right hand, mm. there are pleasures forevermore. Thank you. So we see again... We see that when we don't know what we need to do, right. we learn to trust him and he'll open up our path. Mm -hmm. He will show us direction. He will give us the steps. He orders our steps of the righteous. Yes. He orders us. So yes. when we learn to trust him and we do not know what to do, then he will show us the path to which way we should go. Yes. This is Amen. some of the good news that we need to understand. That's why we need to receive it with gladness, yes. receive it with joy, and shout with joy. Mm. That not only that, that he is sitting at the right hand of the Father as that mediator, that all that we need and do is that he will go to the Father for us, that we're right. able God. to go to yes. the throne room yes. in the Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, sad to say that. Psalms 30 and 5. It says, For his anger endureth for a moment, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but the joy cometh in the morning. Mm. That means that Lord. we might be going through trials and tribulations. That we might be going through trials and tribulations. <laughs> and we have to understand all the stuff that's there. That we might be going through things that we just don't really enjoy. We might go through things that we say, how am I going to get through this? But it goes back to things, do we trust him? Do we trust him? Nah, nah. Because he loves us so much that he will give us that joy in the morning. That we don't have to keep enduring, have to keep enduring the trials and tribulations because we know, we know that joy will come in the morning if we will only trust him. That these things are only momentary afflictions. They're only momentary. That yeah. when we trust him and we learn to rejoice and shout with yeah. joy and shout for his name, this is only momentary. Yeah. This is only momentary. Yes. That because joy will come in the morning. Amen. The joy will come when we trust him. Mm. We go in, Psalms 32, 11 says, Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, and be righteous. Shout for joy, for ye are the upright in heart. So what is he saying there? We should have the joy. We should shout. We should be excited. Yes, amen. We should be excited for what the Lord has done for us. We, that, that his holy presence is there. We should be excited. And have that joy. And have that joy. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That as we set our hearts right yes. with God. Amen. Set our hearts right with God. And don't let other distractions in this world to pull at our hearts somewhere else. That we should set our hearts right with Him. Oh, such a gift, such a say it. Oh, Lord Jesus. And so we have to set that when we have our hearts straight, that we can rejoice. And that joy will come and will become full and overwhelming us. <coughs> Psalms 35, 27 says, 
Psalms 35, 27 says, Let them shout for joy. Who is them? It's the ones that believe. The ones that believe. It's us yeah. that we learn to yeah. shout for joy because we have the gladness. Mm -hmm. We have that good news. We have that glad tidings that he gives us, that good tidings. We have that peace. We have his presence. We have his preservation for us. It says, let them that shout for joy and be glad for that favor my righteous cause. Let them say, continue, the Lord be magnif magnified, which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. What is he saying? We should be joyful because he is totally, totally wants the best for our life. Yes, yes. Thank you. Totally wanting the best for our life. Amen, amen. He wants us to prosper in all that we do. Yes. And then all that we do. And so we should lift up his name. We should have, we should rejoice and have that joy that is in us should come out and bubble out as, as rejoicing and rejoice forevermore. And then sometimes we do feel down. Sometimes we feel out. Sometimes we just seem like the world is just totally pressing down on us. But we can remember, as David said, when David was at his lowest point in his life, that after he had sinned and he lost his child, my, and my. he lost his child in Psalms 51, <clears throat> he says in Psalms 51, 12, Restore me the joy of thy salvation. Yes, Lord. And uphold me with thy salvation. Yes. And uphold me with that spirit. The joy of the Lord is our strength. No matter what we're going through. When we're going through fear, when we're going through tribulations, when we're going through sickness, we're going through financial problems. Nice. We going through when people just don't understand you. When we're going through relationship problems, when we're going through just Problems even could be at school or being problems. We have to understand that he will, because that we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, yes. that he will renew yes. that joy over us Praise and God. over yes. us Amen. and over us again. Amen. And he mm -hmm. will, he will say it at that last part, and he will uphold that free spirit. That means that he will send the Holy Spirit to you. That his mighty presence will be felt. His mighty presence will be felt. That your spirit will be lifted up. Your spirit will be lifted up. So in this time that we're at the Christmas season, we need to understand we should not get so bumfuzzled there. Just so this and that and get so wrapped up in the commercialism, or it's all right to give presents. It's all our right to do things, but we should not let it get us down. We should say, Lord, renew that joy. Renew that joy. Let me know my purpose. Let me know yes. what you have given me. Yes. Let me rejoice in that good news that if I believe in you, oh, I can have everlasting life. Praise but not God. only everlasting life that begins at the time of your death, but everlasting life from the time you accept Jesus. Thank you, Father. Eternal life begins when you ask Jesus into yes. your heart. Yes. And then you are able to rejoice. Be able to have that joy that is fullness. That you can have that cheerfulness even in adverse circumstances, that you can have that peace that passes all understanding. That's the good news, that you're not here alone, that you're not here alone in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, let us pray. Father God, 
we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your joy. We thank you for that good news. That if we believe in you and accept you as our Lord and Savior, that we can overcome fear, distress, anxiety. Yes. We can overcome it because the good news that you sent your son. Yes. Thank you. Jesus. And Father, let us shout for joy. Mm. In this time, Father, I just pray mm. us as believers yes. will go forth and get out of our grumpiness, get out of our stress, yes. and just be renewed yes. that we can rejoice and let the joy that is in you show out to this lost and dying world. Father, we thank you for your son. Yes. We thank you for your spirit. Yes. We just thank you for loving us.